Hi everyone, uh, what we have here today is Audio Sonic, never heard of this before, uh, cassette player from uh, probably early 70s. This is something I always wanted to have uh, because I want to load games um, to my 8-bit machines, um, old tapes, actual tapes. Uh, so I bought this uh, today from uh, the local flea, flea market again and I'm hoping um, that I can uh, restore it um, whatever is needed to make it work and use it um, along with my 8-bit machines I can see the good thing is it has AC power in uh, remote microphone and auxiliary um, sockets so you can uh, put external microphone or whatever and of course on the other side uh, the, the, there is the ear a classic um, ear uh, light volume um, notch no eject button you have to raise it by hand uh, pretty clever um, and let's see what we can do um, if whatever is needed I'm pretty sure um, I need to replace the belt if there is any belt uh, inside after 40 years or so uh, 50 years if this is from the early 70s there are a couple of screws missing on the side there must be uh, or there was a belt something that you can carry this with you uh, as it used to be this type of uh, dictating machine back in the day I'm gonna restore the, the screws and all that easy stuff. Check the AC power. Uh, check the uh, sockets. Um, and um, but yeah, first of all, let's see if the the belt is in place. Uh, I have a couple of belts. I can replace them and see what happens. Now, <coughs> this is what I call classic Japanese simplicity. One screw. Well, that holds the back cover. Uh, I opened the battery compartment, but there was no screw underneath there. Um, so one screw that holds the the cover together. Um, of course, the sponge uh, to hold the batteries is gone. Uh, needless to say, after all these years, and then the classic um, credit card uh, method to open. Uh, the device around and separate the upper part from the bottom part or a light screwdriver uh, would do uh, no um, screws inside the cassette compartment those two uh, have been missing so let me open this up and uh, at this point I think I'm gonna be using um, yeah this is the, the right place to put um, um, a, li a light screwdriver or something like this to um, to separate the bottom part and then uh, it's easy to to open it um, to open the device completely as simple as it gets you can always uh, place the uh, credit card around it and uh, open it but in this case uh, it wasn't needed and now we can see a Bakelite um, plate board uh, we can see the big um, motor here down here with a very loose very very loose 50 year old belt needs uh, to be replaced of course it doesn't have the strength to um, to roll the uh, rollers at all you can tell we can see the uh, mains coming into this transformer uh, at the same time you can see the cables uh, getting 6 volts from the batteries and he around here is the power supply um, and power smoothing um, circuit on the Bakelite uh, PCB uh, simple as it back in the 70s uh, it was very common to use uh, Bakelite circuits um, uh, plates because it's suitable for low frequency circuits 
like this one, like a cassette player, uh, doesn't have the need to um, um, to um, work with high frequencies uh, at all, at any point. And on the other hand, modern um, epoxy um, plates uh, are suitable for high frequency circuits. Thus, uh, epoxy is used for modern um, contemporary electronics. Um, first step when we have to deal with uh, such old machines is to give them a, a very good um, clean with a uh, brush and uh, alcohol, some alcohol. There are um, uh, points that uh, can be sticky after that uh, but we have to, to do this as a first step and then we can remove any um, uh, particles or glue or wax or whatever was there um, uh, um, later with um, the use of uh, alcohol tissue. Uh, at least this is what I do as a step two. So a nice good uh, clean with alcohol um, for the baking light uh, plate and uh, then we can change the belt and uh, move to uh, anything else that is needed. We can see also little uh, pieces of sponge like this one which dissolves by the time it's even touched um, uh, were used to stabilize and hold um, the cover and some parts together. I am planning to put back those uh, little pieces of sponge later uh, but first, um, as uh, described earlier, I have this uh, alcohol tissue and this is the final touch over the end around the Bakelite uh, plate. Um, there can be uh, leftovers, uh, you can imagine dust, soldering uh, particles um, or even um, pieces of this old uh, sponge there or wax, glue, uh, you name it anything can be there so um, and after uh, applying the um, alcohol with a brush uh, some parts of the PCB can be sticky uh, so we don't want them to remain sticky uh, and then uh, we so we have to uh, do this little uh, clean up with uh, tissue. Now dealing with uh, belt finally um, I was thinking maybe there is a screw uh, holding um, this big roller but there is no screw so I have to raise it by the hand and replace the belt. Let's see how can we do this. I found uh, several belts in my spares. I think it's the same length for each and every one of those but the profile uh, yeah the profile of each is different so I have to see which is the thicker one uh, which matches the existing one and change it. Sometimes you have to um, experiment a bit with the belts um, because the loose belt um, that you might find um, already inside your old equipment could be sitting there for uh, quite a few years and um, you might need a shorter one. In this case I picked the exact um, length like the one um, it was there in the first place but I think it might not work um, so I have to experiment and get a shorter, a shorter one um, because this one, although it's new, might be also loose. So I will grab a, a really shorter one from my spares and try to do the uh, the test with this one. Um, it has to be not very very short or tight because uh, it won't work. And uh, before we can uh, actually test um, the music and everything um, here is a spot you have to raise by hand, there is no screw holding it uh, down. Uh, 
there is always a classic test uh, by hand so you have to roll it over roll it over and see that the movement is smooth and there are no leftovers uh, from the previous uh, belt uh, pieces or particles or whatever um, you have to make sure that the movement is uh, smooth yeah and of course we have to deal with the <coughs> little pieces of sponge I have uh, some uh, sponge here to cut it and uh, fit it there non-conductive material of course for uh, equipment like this all, you, all I have to do is to cut the right shape and not to forget the battery compartment as well and glue um, the new sponge this is um, where the old sponge used to be so it will be almost like new or I'm hoping uh, tonight we can listen to some music after all uh, but this is not the, the case I wanted this so much because I want to load games to my uh, old uh, ZX Spectrum and uh, other 8-bit machines uh, so this is why uh, yeah, I placed the sponge and everything those uh, positions uh, matching the uh, the plate holding it uh, together so yeah I, I'm gonna be using this uh, old school uh, cassette player for loading games to my old vintage uh, collection of 8-bit systems like the ZX Spectrum uh, and other machines um, apart from the music I don't care much about it um, and I'm gonna try to um, connect it to mains uh, give it power uh, with batteries and all that and I'm going to check the ear and uh, microphone uh, inputs and outputs and all that and uh, just to be on the safe side the first test will be conducted with batteries not to blow or to fry anything so I placed uh, fresh batteries in the battery compartment uh, giving us the 6 volts that we need in order to operate and I hope it can operate after all uh, the screw went uh, right there in the center and I found a couple of screws um, to fit the, those one, the, the ones that, that were missing on both sides and uh, yeah uh, let's uh, yeah the same or almost the same <laughs> screw on the other side not exactly the same but anyways um, and let's see what happens uh, cleaning up uh, is something I can do really uh, thoroughly uh, later I can deal with that and uh, I have an old cassette and let's give it a try so play it Sam and yes it works uh, sorry for uh, interruption um, I just wanted to uh, to check that um, the tape is not chewed uh, in any way uh, or broken I can listen to the music uh, sorry for this I'm not going to transmit it over the channel for um, the known reasons with copyrights and everything and the second test now after batteries is to put it on a power supply I have a power supply I had to change the polarity by hand you can see here um, I have changed the uh, and checked that the um, positive is in the middle so I can uh, power it with uh, 6 volts uh, and check it again and see if it works uh, with uh, yeah with the power supply and apparently it does work um, with the power supply which actually uh, let me check acts like a switching uh, power supply because now it goes on with the batteries still playing the song uh, stop for now and check again I think by the time I'm plugging in the uh, adapter 
um, it goes from batteries to uh, to the um, power supply yeah um, smart and by the time um, I remove the um, the plug uh, it goes uh, it continues with the batteries I mean uh, smart way of handling the power um, yeah and I'm pretty pleased with the results I can listen to the music uh, some old uh, school tracks that I have in this tape uh, it's not chewed um, I have now to clean uh, the heads the last thing to do um, is always to clean the heads with alcohol and the pitch roller uh, which is um, subject to uh, replace to be replaced um, in the future but it's hard to get the um, the one that fits so a bit of alcohol on the play head and a bit of alcohol on the erase head and uh, that will be the last um, and final thing to do and um, I'm very happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, restoration as much as I did. Uh, I can play now my old uh, school um, uh, game tapes uh, with this uh, little device um, and uh, load my games um, on my 8-bit uh, computers which was actually the goal, the, the uh, what I wanted to achieve today, and um, that's why I bought this uh, very old um, but reliable uh, piece of equipment today from the flea market. And um, oh, oh, something is wrong here; uh, it won't play. Ooh, let me check. The usual suspects. Um, the batteries have moved somehow, so I need to make sure the sponge holds them uh, tight together. Um, because if they move around, they lose contact. So that was all, I believe. It can happen. Um, and yes, we are back on track. Everything seems to work fine. I can listen to the music. It is great, volume up and down and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'll be back with uh, other uh, repairs soon. Uh, one last thing I wanted to check is the ear um, plug. Uh, putting some uh, headphones on. This is important if I want to transfer my uh, games um, over the uh, ZX Spectrum for example so yeah I can listen to the music through the uh, earphones and this is great news uh, thanks for watching uh, consider subscribing um, whenever you have the chance to get uh, stuff like this it's pretty reliable um, and I can strongly suggest um, you buy it um, you can always um, um, re restore, repair and do whatever you want to uh, machines and things like this from the past. Thanks for watching. Uh, bye for now.